Here we are with the Pontiac Solstice again. We're going to work on showing you how to change out the variable valve timing solenoid in it. Now the reason we're going to change it is not because we have a code that's telling us to change it, but because we have a code we can't find anything on. And you say, well then why are we choosing this? We're going to choose this because our son happens to have a car that his wife drives, and after taking it to a local repair shop, they had no code answer either, and they tested all the solenoids and found out the variable valve timing solenoid was bad. And then looking around on the internet, we find out that these solenoids can go bad at like 40,000 miles. And this particular solstice, our second one we've had, has about 109,000 miles on it. And we didn't own it from new, so we don't know if it's ever been changed, or if it's on its second one, or if it's on its third one. So it probably needs one anyway. And if you're wondering, why would it need one? We'll show you that in just a moment. Here we have a Dorman 917215 variable valve timing solenoid. I'm going to show you what it looks like. And it's also going to let you know what's probably wrong with the one that's in the car that we hope will fix our check engine light problem. But even if it doesn't, it's almost for certain in need of being changed. Now this one is now the plastic yet, but there's a series of screens down in here. These screens become clogged because it is actually controlling oil flow. So over time, those become clogged, the solenoid goes bad, and you need to change it out. So now we're going to show you how we change it out. Step one in doing this is you're going to have to take off your engine cover. When they first came up with cars' engines, they used to like to show everything to everybody because everybody thought that was really cool, it was so high-tech. Nowadays, they like to cover it all up. So you just grab onto it and you have to give it a good pull because it just snaps on. It snaps on here, 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 and right there. Four points. Next thing you're going to want to do, take off your oil fill cap because that's going to be in your way assuming you still have your insulation here like you should and I'm going to throw a paper towel in there just in the top so that I don't get any additional dirt in there now I don't really want to have to pull this thing completely off if I don't have to because it's kind of a pain to do but what we have to get to as you see I'm going to bend it back and try to keep everything in place but bend it back and show you that this is the unit right here that we're going to have to take out so right where I was pointing, that has to come out. And down in there is a 10 millimeter bolt holding that solenoid in that I'm going to have to take out. And we're also going to have to disassemble up here to take off our wiring. So we'll get to work on doing that. Right here, as I showed you, this is the part we're going to have to remove. There's a little tab right in the center, right below my finger. you got to press back on the tab and pull up and you can actually remove the part. So now we've got our wiring off of it. Now we're ready to go down in there, get our 10 millimeter socket and loosen the bolt. I've got a 10 millimeter socket down there on an extension and I'm gonna just remove this part. And you see it didn't take a lot of force. And I got news for you from what I've seen on the internet. People are saying so many people crank these things down hard. You don't wanna do that. It's not necessary. This part is not going to like fly out of there. So just make it nice and snug and you'll be fine. Alrighty, that should be loose. There we go. Took it out with a magnet. Because again, I'm trying not to have to tear this whole car apart just to do this. Now the hard part's going to be getting it out of the hole. There, I got it. It's loose. So if you need to use something, here I have a little vice grip with adjustable pliers. Just grabbing onto it and wiggling it back and forth allowed me to get it loose. So there's the old one. You can see it's really dirty. And it's probably been in there a long time, especially since I had a hard time getting out when it's absolutely, this engine's absolutely stone cold right now. All right, I've got the new one here, which you can see is different color but that doesn't matter but it has an 8.8 .8 on it doesn't have a 10 whatever so 
tops 8.8. The problem with that is I hope I have an 8.8 .8 put it back. I'm going to use their bolt. I've got it set down in there. Now I've got to get down in there and tighten the bolt up. So it's back in the hole. And it really just slides in. It's not a big deal. It's just the other one's probably been in there so darn long it just didn't want to come out. I'm going to pull this and we'll go back to the other side. So I got a number eight socket on here. And we are going down, tightening it up. Remember I told you, you don't have to do anything but to get it tight. You don't have to like crank on this. It's not going to come flying out of here. It has an O-ring on it. That's what's actually sealing it. So we just got to get it all the way down in there and get it tight. And there it is tight. And you notice I'm using about a 5-inch total length, about 4-inch handle socket wrench. That's all you got to have. And that'll be just fine. So that's all done with that. We're going to push our cover back down into place all around here. And now we'll take our little connector and working back on and the connectors back in place that's all done last thing is to line up your cover and make sure your little line back here is out from under it press it down hit it in four spots that's all done and really one more step let's put our oil cap back in place here there we go and the oil cap's done. So the parts all change. That's all there is to doing it. Easy job. Probably, as I said, I've seen that they tell, tell you at about 40,000 miles those can go out. So they don't last that long. And it's really because they get plugged. Even with your proper oil filtration and your synthetic, they eventually plug out. So that's how to change that part out. We'll see if that actually gets rid of the check engine light. And we'll let you know right here on the end of the video in just a moment. Alrighty, here we are at O'Reilly Auto Parts. We got our variable valve timing solenoid. We're going to have them clear out our check engine light and see if we fix the car. So, and a driver, and a driver. So, Anya, what can I do for you? Ooh, I got it. Let's read some codes, if there's any. Vacuum pump control. Cylinder one misfire. Vacuum pump, another vacuum pump control. And another cylinder one misfire. You know, you know, let's, let's just clear it and see what happens. With gotcha. This. And then we'll worry about if there's other things. Indeed. Clearing them right now in the process. I can tell you it drives better already, oh, so I want to okay. see. All right, it went ahead and cleared. There we go. Go ahead and start her up. Moment, so they be driven and find out what happens. after being at O'Reilly and having the car red again. Now, as you notice, there were other codes. We didn't want to do anything with those codes at the time, but clear them out because we already knew we had a code that we couldn't recognize what we were supposed to fix. But I've got to tell you, we didn't set a light on the way back. That's not a long enough drive. We'll be doing that and finding out. But as far as does the car feel better, does it perform better? Oh, what a difference. 
we didn't show you it before, but it sort of stumbled when you were actually stepping on it. No longer stumbles, runs beautifully. So we'll see if it sets a coat over time. But we do know at the very least, we got rid of the stumbling in this car that we were having. And we may well have fixed the car up. The other things might be because the variable valve timing was causing us troubles. So we'll see. Like and subscribe for more videos. Hit the little notification bell. See you later. Thank you.